Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we are going to do some Bash Shell scripting with relational operators. In order to do so, we'll also talk about conditions using if, else if, and else clauses. If you need help setting up a new shell script, make sure to check out the first video in the series where we talk about what Bash Shell scripting is exactly and how we can go ahead and create and run your first script. All right, let's get into things now. If you're new and stopping by to watch a programming video today, please make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more videos. And what we'll do is launch a new terminal. So I'm just gonna do Control Alt T and then I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bigger so we can see this. So I'm gonna zoom in and that should be plenty big. Let's maximize that. And then I'm just gonna to go to my documents folder where I've saved the last couple scripts we did. I'm going to create a new script, so I'm going to use nano to do so. And I'm gonna call this one relational operators.sh. And I'm gonna press enter, and then we can go ahead and start creating our program. We'll first put in our magic line, which is the pound sign followed by an exclamation point, and where my bash program is located, so user bin bash for me. And underneath here, we can go ahead and start writing our code. So like I said, we're gonna be talking about relational operators today, and in order to do that, we'll have to learn about conditions using if, else, if, and else. So in Bash Shell scripting, in order to use if, else, if, else statements, we simply define it as if some condition is true, then do some statement here, else if, then we do another statement, else we do a third statement, and finally to end our overall if clause, we just do fi, so the reverse of if. So this else if is gonna expect a condition as well, so we'll go ahead and put these brackets in. So let's fill something into the brackets in order to go ahead and test our script and make sure that things work properly. So I'm thinking we just echo. So echo will just spit out something to our console, some type of a string. So I'm just gonna say in the if clause. So if something is true in these brackets, then we're going to echo in the if clause. This right here is just a comment since we have a hashtag in front. I'll keep it in here just for referencing purposes. So if this is not true, let's check our second condition, which is an else if. So in here, if whatever's in these brackets is true, then we're gonna do another statement. And that other statement is going to echo out in the else if clause. I'll just capitalize the I at the beginning so everything's the same. And then finally, we have the else clause. All the else means is if the conditions all beforehand aren't true, so this else if or this if, then we're going to go ahead through this third statement. So we're going to echo in the else clause. All right, so let's go ahead and learn about our first relational operator. And I'm gonna go ahead and make note of these up top. So the first one is going to be the equivalence operator. So you can do that by using the dash EQ and checking the equivalence of either two strings or numbers that you would like. So we'll go ahead and create a variable with some strings or numbers. You can either use dash EQ or if you want to use something that's similar to C programming, some people also call this C shell because it has a resemblance of the C programming language, you can just do a double equal sign. So I put these two pipes here, just the notes in or, don't let that confuse you. Actually, I'm just gonna type in or. So you can use dash EQ or two equal signs. So let's first try the dash EQ. So I'm going to create two variables. I'm gonna call it v1 equal to a number, and let's just put in five for now. And then v2, variable two, is going to be equal to another number, six for now. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna check if v1 is equal to, so dash eq to v2. Don't forget your 
percentage sign out front in order to denote that you're looking at a variable. And we'll do that here as well. But this time, let's go ahead and put in another clause. So let's try the NE, which is not equal to statement. So far, we've now talked about EQ. And now let's talk about NE. So I'll go ahead and put another comment here, dash NE, or you can use pound equal sign, just stands for not equal to. And I should just make a note here, this is equal to. All right, so we would expect out of this, if V1 is equal to V2, then we would go into this clause statement and echo out in the if clause, otherwise, if v1 is not equal to v2, we'll get this other echo which says in the else if clause. Otherwise, if neither of these are true, then we'll get the in the else clause. So let's go ahead and give this a try at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control X and hit yes so I can save my file and press enter to overwrite the file. Next thing I want to do is go ahead and ch change the file so it can be an executable. I can do that by using chmod space plus x and then just putting relational operators.sh. After I press enter, you'll notice that it's now in green here. In order to run it, I'm just going to go ahead and do the dot forward slash relational operators.sh and we got some output it says in the else if clause. So let's go back into our script and check out how things ended up working. So if we use nano again, and we open up the relational operators.sh script that we just created, we can see that we ended up in here. So that makes sense because v1, we set that to five, v2, we set that to six. So we would expect if five is equivalent to six, then we would echo out this statement. Otherwise, if v1 is not equal to v2, then we would echo out this statement instead. And that's exactly what we did. So following that, let's go ahead and introduce yet another relational operator here. And this one is the dash gt one. Or you can just use the open angle bracket, which stands for greater than. So this is the third type of relational operator that you can use. So let's go ahead and put that one to the test as well. So we can do that by maybe let's say changing one of these conditions here. So let's change the not equal to to the greater than. So now it's just gonna check in this else if statement. If variable one is greater than variable two, then we're gonna go into the else if clause. So let's just go ahead and run through this by ourselves. So is variable one five greater than variable two six? No, that would mean that they're not equivalent and that V1 is not greater than V2. So we shouldn't expect to get into this clause either. So we should see this else clause that says in the else clause. So why don't we go ahead and give that a try? I'm gonna exit out again, save my buffer and rerun the script. And as you can see here, we are in the else clause, which is perfect because that's what we expected. Now, in order to go ahead and get into the first clause, let's go ahead and change this variable two around so it does match V1. So now they're both five. We should expect in the if clause to come up this time if we run our program. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and let's rerun it. And you can see we are in the if clause this time. Great. So back to our program, how do we get into the greater than clause? So that one is right here. That would tell us that variable one has to be greater than variable two. So let's go ahead and make that happen. So if I go ahead and change variable one to be a number, let's say six, well, six is greater than five, we should expect this else if to be true and that we will be in the else if clause. So let's go ahead and save our buffer and then rerun. As you can see now, we are in the else if clause because variable one is greater than variable two. So if there's a greater than, there's also a less than. So you probably already guessed this, but it's LT or the closed angle bracket, which that just stands for less than. 
You also have two more, which are more inclusive operators, known as greater than or equal, or you can use this seashell operator, which just means greater than or equal, and you also have less than or equal. And let's go ahead and try some of these out as well. So before going further with this, I'll actually make this if else if and else statement. I'll go ahead and make this conditional below a lot simpler. What I'll do is uh, remove the else if statement. That way we can get a true or false. But before we do that, I'd like to go ahead and try something. So let's change this to greater than or equal to go ahead and test this statement out. So what we would expect, and if we change v1 to 5, now we have v1 and v2 equal to 5. Well, both of these statements are technically true, right? So if v1 is equivalent to v2, it is, because it's 5 and 5, or if v1 is greater than or equal to v2, which it is because, again, it's testing equivalence as well as being greater than. So they are equivalent to each other. So this statement should be true as well. So what would you expect to actually show up in the terminal or your console? The way that these statements work is the processor will go through and check the equivalence until it finds its first match. And then it will end the if statement entirely. So with that being said, it's going to go in here, check if v1 is equivalent to v2. If that's true, then it's going to go ahead and echo this statement out. And it's going to forget about everything else and end the if statement down here so it can move on to the next line. So what we should expect, in instead of the bash processor echoing out both this statement as well as this other statement, we should only get the first one. So let's give that a shot. I'm going to go ahead and save this and run the program again. And as you can see here, we did not get two statements. Instead, we just got the one. So now you should be fairly familiar with if, else if, and else statements. They're very easy to use, and they're also very important. So in order to make things a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and erase my else if statement. And now I'm just going to say true or false. So either this if statement's going to be true and it's going to tell us it's true, else it's just going to label it false and spit out false. I'm also going to get rid of our comments here in both sections. That way we have something very easy to follow. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Bash Shell scripting tutorial using conditions and relational operators. We'll go ahead and continue with more conditions in the next episode. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.